Hi, it's Alan Lausch with Financial Network Analytics and welcome to FNA Correlations. So we're going to look at the escalating risk we've seen in global equity markets which started last Thursday when we saw some outliers in Europe, uh, especially Germany and France, disappointed. And we can see that um, systematic risk had been edging up slightly since June from 60 to 62 percent. And then we got a classic case of uh, escalating systematic risk on Friday when um, Brexit um, uh, uh, probability increased significantly as a few different surveys indicated that the, UA, that the UK, um, well, that is going to be a close call there. Um, so uh, all eyes are on Brexit right now. You can see that was where most of the risk was concentrated. You can see here at the UK was the biggest uh, surprise, but uh, this is a broad European thing. And then we can see that there's really contagion to the core of equity markets. So this was a very, very broad um, move in equity markets. You can see systematic risk is now at 69%, uh, just shy of what uh, we might have seen during, say, the um, uh, August flash crash. So you can see that uh, at the peak of the uh, January, early February systemic crisis, um, we, ha we were at about 79% systematic risk, so it's less than that. Um, and um, we can see in, uh, on the 24th of August, systematic risk was 74%, but uh, it's sort of that order of magnitude that we are looking at here. Um, this was certainly the biggest negative surprise we've seen across global equities. Uh, since uh, about the 15th of January. And um, the negative outliers continued um, on Monday. So we saw that Asia, markets in Asia, sort of caught up with the negative sentiment um, uh, in, uh, in Friday. Uh, we can see especially um, Hong Kong, South Korea uh, disappointed. So that's obviously quite worrying. It's also quite interesting to see uh, U.S. markets so closely correlated to China. So the strongest link uh, for the U.S. broad markets is currently um, Chinese equities at 83% correlation. It's quite unusual, but that is currently the strongest link that, that, that there is actually for between U.S. and uh, China. I'm just going to try to get, uh, actually let me open this up to get a time series view of the correlation, because that's quite a curious structure. You don't usually get the U.S. so tightly correlated to China. So you can see that correlation has been edging up. It's at 83% um, and is shy of its 87% peak um, back in February. Um, let's just take one more perspective. The map view, uh, you can see everything sort of aligned in one line, meaning that um, uh, uh, systematic risk, the first factor is really accounting for most of the risk. There's not a lot of width there. Things are clustered quite closely together. And so you can see here, here how closely the U.S., Japan, and Hong Kong are clustered, and China is not so far away. Uh, so that's uh, somewhat of a worrying development for U.S. equities, which had been quite resilient. Um, so let's hope that goes well. Uh, obviously, all eyes are going to be on uh, the way Britain votes, so um, uh, we can expect volatility to continue. Indeed, if we look at the cross-asset view yesterday, Monday, we saw that VIX futures saw a huge jump. Um, let's, uh, let's see here. VIX futures had a spike they just, two days in a row now, um, and you can see that was really the biggest spike in VIX futures, biggest two-day spike um, since the uh, August flash crash of last year. So that's quite a, a, a big move there, and um, obviously a, a significant concern here that the U.S. markets are broadly infected. And you can see the structure of a standard flight to safety. You can see that uh, VIX futures are flight to safety. 20-year government bonds are closely negatively correlated with financials, a negative 73% correlation. So that's a, a good safe haven asset, unless you want to buy outright insurance for VIX. And, um, and that's at a 100-day low, so that's, that's a sign of risk, a significant risk aversion. Gold did well, Japanese yen as well. 
Uh, let's see how reliable gold was as a flight to safety. So we can see gold here um, has a negative correlation with uh, uh, broad, most of the broad markets. Let's see, gold versus Dow is at um, 0.3, so it is working as a safe haven. Um, not as reliable as uh, the US 20 year. And let's look at the Japanese yen as well. Focus here on the Japanese yen, and we can see, for example, Japanese yen versus SP 500, 0.41, negative 0.41, so fairly reliable. We see that that correlation has been negative since we saw that big structural shift when China infected global markets between the 26th to the 29th uh, of June. Um, so clearly there is significant systematic risk in these markets right now, which gives value to flight to safety havens like uh, the U.S. 10 and 20 year government bonds, gold, silver, uh, Japanese yen, and um, the euro as well to some extent. Let's look at the euro. Uh, and we can see actually the euro is not a flight to safety. You can see a positive correlation between the euro and major stock markets. So um, if you want a flight to safety currency, really that would be the Japanese yen. And let's look at the dollar index here. Um, we can see that the dollar index is broadly negatively correlated against most assets. So this is quite extraordinary actually to see such consistent negative correlation. Uh, for example, let's take um, uh, the uh, dollar against Asia. We can see that's a negative 0.26 correlation. Dollar against emerging markets is even more significant, negative 0.47 correlation. Right? And that's at a new 100-day high. So the U.S. dollar is a preferred flight to safety asset and a major system systemic pressure point. Uh, in other words, a strong dollar hurts most assets, and a weaker dollar would be the best thing to happen to global markets to take the pressure off. So let's all hope the um, UK decides to stay within the European Union. Uh, otherwise, things will get a bit more iffy. Thanks for tuning in. Any questions, email me at alan.fna.fi.